so here we are with the GeForce Oberheim OBE and this is a recreation of the Oberheim early synthesizer um, and I was attracted to this because I'm a massive Lyle Mays fan and I really love uh, everything he did but I really love the textures of some of the synth sounds that he got in the early Pat Metheny records um, and that is this synth and it kind of disappeared for a long time because it's so hard to work with and program with the original real synth and was replaced by synths which could do things much more in a practical way the problem with it was that each of these different synth modules was an entirely independent separate synth and each one was monophonic so to play chords you would have to set each one up exactly the same and get the tuning the same which was all just knobs you turned so it was very hard to get things sounding good it took time um, not easy to tour with and um, yeah not easy to work with so it's really kind of reappeared in software form uh, in a big way because it sounds fantastic and in software, of course, you can get around all those problems that plagued the uh, original. So, because I love that sound, when various um, Oberheim um, came out of the, the original one, um, I was always checking them out. And, yes, yeah, some of them sounded quite good and, and, and really pretty good, but um, when this one came out, um, to my ears, it was just head and shoulders above the rest of them. It really sounds amazing. I mean, the, some of the other sound like pretty good and layered with other synths give you a little bit of that kind of feeling, but on their own, for me, not quite cutting it. Whereas this one, I mean, it's there, that sound that, that I always loved. And it's a huge sound. Nothing else has really ever sounded like this. Um, this kind of vast sound that has a certain texture and um, quality to it that's unique to this synth that, that I've always really liked just creates a, a really wonderful atmosphere so it's great to have it sounding like the original and with so much extra flexibility as, they, as they've added in so you've got eight voices here and I think the original had four I'm not sure if they went up higher than that I'm not an expert on the history of synths or anything but what's great about this is not only does it sound amazing um, but you can zoom in on each of these identical ones and before I do that I'm just going to show you that there's a button here you can press and that means that when you change one of these um, it changes it changes them all so you don't have to program each one separately but of course you can by turning this off so if I turn that on and then zoom in here I'm seeing just one of these but um, it's going to affect all the everything I change here is going to affect all the other ones so let's just have a look at what we have here we've got two oscillators just like the original had and two uh, modulation for each of them so what these frequencies are these is the pitch and you've got modulation here which allows you to modulate either the pitch if you move the modulation this way it's going to modulate the pitch more and more as you move it this way or the pulse width of the oscillator if it's set to pulse width oscillation which it may not be so we'll get on to that um, and this is the width the pulse width which you can set as a static amount um, and then of course as I just said you can modulate it here and what modulates it is determined here you can use envelope 1 here um, or you can use the VCO3 which is a something we'll talk about that wasn't in the original or you can use the LFO which is here just a simple uh, sawtooth LFO in the original but you can actually change it in this one to different waveforms which is really cool so they've done a great job of expanding the original while keeping the sound of the original it's like they reproduce the sound of original like brilliantly well 
and then they added some really great extras without taking away from the original. So just moving on here um, to the filter section, we've got frequency, the filters and a um, low pass filter if you have it here or moving up to here it's a notch filter and a high pass or anywhere in between or you can switch it to band pass which disables this um, and then you can modulate the frequency here and just like with the oscillators you can modulate it with those same three sources only here you got envelope two rather than envelope one so the reason is envelope one is used for um, VCA the, amp the amplitude the volume which is why you might want to modulate, modulate this with that. And this is something you'd use more for the frequency. Um, but you can also use it for a VCO2 here if you want to modulate them differently, separately from each other, you can do that. So, um, now what's a little confusing here, and I guess this is true to the original, is that you've got these three controls down here under the the frequency section here, but they're nothing to do with frequency. They are, in fact, the controls for the oscillator volumes, which is kind of a little confusing. I mean, layout-wise, I guess that's where they had to fit it, but just so you realize it's got nothing to, despite being in this box, it's got nothing to do with these other controls. These are, this is the volume for VCO1, and turning it this way makes it sawtooth as soon as you get off the zero point and it gets louder and louder and louder at the zero point it's off no vco one will not sound move it this way and it moves towards pulse width so if you've got and this is just the volume of the pulse width waveform so if you've got this turned on here then this pulse width has an effect obviously it's not going to if you've got it on saw and it also means that if you modulate the pulse width you'll start to hear it otherwise you're not going to hear it if it's over at saw so you've got the same thing for vco2 and VCO3, which we'll get onto in a minute, which wasn't in the original. And we've got our envelopes, envelope one, attack, decay, sustain. Now these are a little bit unusual because we're used to an ADSR, attack, decay, sustain, release, and these don't have a release. You've got an attack, which is like a time, the time it takes to attack and to decay, which is a time, the time it takes to go down to the sustain level. And this is the sustain, the like a volume of the, what it sustains at, and it's the same with ENV2. Uh, LFO rate, and now moving over, I'm not gonna do an exhaustive um, walkthrough, by the way, just giving you the basic controls. Oh, you got resonance here, obviously, which I left out, um, as you'd expect to have. VCO3 can be its own extra oscillator if you want three oscillators and you can set it to uh, wave here, which means that you now can choose wave, sine wave, saw, or square wave. Or you can move to here, which is noise. And here you've got a choice where you can actually have a noise uh, or wave. So if you have it this way, you're gonna hear the wave source here. This way you're gonna hear noise. And so here's the noise. signal there. Why is that not playing back? Stand. I don't get this. It's coming out. Stereo out. So why is this not getting it?
Okay, let's... If you move it this way, you're going to hear noise. This way you're going to hear the wave. Sign or square. So that's VCO3. You've got three different waveforms. Um, so you can add in a third one here if you need to and tune that just like the other ones. Um, I'm not going to go into all the details, but there's details about the tuning and so forth and how that works. In other words, you can do you can do coarse tuning um, by semitones, um, or you can do fine tuning and so forth. So the other thing you can do with VCO3, which is really useful, is you can use it as an extra modulation source. So you've got LFO1 here, where you can change the waveform. Um, and then you've also got this. So you can have two modulation sources. Oh, well, you can have four modulation sources, actually, because you've got envelope one and two. But if you just think about LFO kind of modulation sources, which VCO isn't exactly an LFO, but it can act like one. So there's different things you can do with this. And this really expands this synth out a lot. So if you put this on here, LFO rate, what it does is it changes the rate to something that is, if you look down here, hertz, five hertz. It's the kind of rate you'd find useful for an LFO. Turn this off and you get frequencies which are to do with like pitches. Um, so with this on and say we take VCO2 and put it onto VCO3 as a modulation source, I can now get modulation. So I'm going to just turn on VCO2. And you've got that lovely, uh, beautiful sounding uh, Oberheim saw wave. But if I now move this modulation up, you can hear it. And by the way, that really nice reverb, that's built in here. You've got some great delay and reverb, beautiful sounding reverb here. Um, and a sequencer, which I'm not going to cover here. So, you can hear it's on square wave. If I move it to say saw here and, you know, turn the modulation down a bit. Sign maybe. Make it really subtle. Then add in VCO1. Then you're starting to get something, something really nice going on here, which is similar to what you could get with this LFO. But now you've got two. So if I now play a chord here. You can hear you're getting this nice moving, uh, more alive sound. Um, because of the LFO here, and then I could add another bit of modulation here from LFO 1 to this one. Maybe detune this one a tiny bit.
so you can hear um, how much kind of you can do with this. Now, the final thing I'm going to show you here is that you can actually use this to create frequency modulation so you can get some FM stuff happening here. But just before I do, I mean, I could spend, you could spend hours messing with this, but right now I'm modulating the pitch here, but I could modulate the pulse width if I put these onto uh, pulse width uh, waveforms, I could modulate that. So you can get all kinds of nice subtle or extreme modulations going on here. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just show you the other really cool thing you can do. So if I um, turn this LFO rate off and I select, I'm just going to turn on just VCO2 and select VCO3 here as its modulation source. And now we're going to hear you can hear that we're getting frequency modulation. So that varies depending on where I put this. Just turning off the delay there to get it a bit easier to hear this. And of course, this. Or I can move it to a noise so that the noise is going to modulate it. So this really expands it. So you get like the beautiful sound of this original Oberzheim taken into the 21st century with some of these um, extra abilities here, or I guess you could say the 20th century, because all this stuff appeared in the 20th century. But in the fact of having it all here in one place is definitely 21st century. So what I'll do now is I'm just going to show you some couple of patches I've made, which um, I mean, you can make so many different sounds with this. And if you go through some of the presets, I mean, there's a huge array of presets here, a lot. Um, each one of these has a whole load of presets in it. Um, so there's a lot to, to play around with and loads of sequencer things and loads of different sounds. But what I love about this are the pads that you can make from it. And so I'm going to just play a few of those uh, just so you can hear what they sound like. and, and briefly go over like what I how I made them. So I'll try this one here. like huge lush pad. Here's another one. So yeah, 
they're absolutely beautiful sounding. Uh, and the bass on this thing sounds amazing. I'm just gonna double up on the bass here, get a bit more of that going on here. sounding rich warm bass that the synth has um, so I'll quickly go over like what I did to make that sound um, it's interesting I find you can get you can get to those beautiful rich pad sounds in, in a number of different ways so I can could play that previous one which is different from this but actually you know got to from a slightly different way oh so I'm gonna go into um, zoom here so you can see this one because they're all set the same you can detune them all from each other by turning this which is really great and also you can you can change other settings randomly from each other this way the filter and I think you may do some other ones as well or you could do it manually you could turn off this group and go and manually set each one slightly differently like the original would have been here I've got two pulse width waves each of these are on pulse width and I've got them at different pulse widths here. So that's n only just off the center, which means it's almost a square wave. And this is pulse width moved over to one direction, squashed over in one direction. And then frequency pitch is being modulated here by LFO1, uh, VCO2, oscillator two. We've got the frequency being modulated by VCO3 over here. And, um, this is being used as a noise source here. So I'm just gonna um, zero this out for a second. So what I'll do, just so you can hear that, copy this here, and then I'm just gonna turn these off so you can just hear this on its own, just this one. You can hear that getting modulated by the noise here. Now, one thing I didn't mention that's really great is that both the LFO and the VCO have this thing called intro. And what that does is it's basically a time lag before it starts happening. So you start without it and then it fades in the modulation over time, which is really nice. So if I turn this off, you can hear that. And this doesn't have any effect because it's just the noise that's doing that. If I turn it to wave, then I get the usual free FM frequency modulation thing happening. But when it's on noise, you just get it modulated by noise. And so this is just very subtly, uh, if very subtly modulated by the noise. And of course that pulls the pitch out. So I then retune it up here. So you get the modulation, which moves the pitch a bit as well. And then you retune the pitch to the other oscillator here as close as you like it, but it's then got the modulation going on on it. So if I now just go back to here, um, that's just pasted back in the original setting. So that's what it sounds like. So it's just a little bit, you don't, with the two oscillators, you don't hear that noise modulation as a kind of discrete thing, but it adds, it adds to the richness of it all. So playing with chords. So you've got both these modulating in different ways. This with a sine wave actually sawtooth wave and this with noise and then the frequency is being modulated a bit as well with envelope two here and that's basically it and it just such a beautiful sounding synth and the filter on it is just so nice sounding and they absolutely nailed that filter 
Um, I have to say this, I don't know what magic they have uh, going on at GeForce, but it's pretty magical coding, I have to say. The fact that this sounds so rich and so um, sort of organic sounding is just a stunning piece of programming work. I can't even begin to imagine how they've done it. So, yeah, I hope uh, you found this useful. Um, if you did, please do give the video a like and subscribe and ring the bell. And that's really helpful to me and appreciated. And hope to see you next time.